Hi, Peter Borker here, and welcome to today's edition of the Transition Guy. Now, joining me today in the studio is Tom Bailey, founder of Succeed Through Speaking. Welcome, Tom. Peter, thank you so much for having me on your podcast today. Oh, it's my pleasure. One of the reasons why I wanted to bring you on to today's episode was the world has changed drastically over the last 10 years, and especially throughout the pandemic. And one thing that I have noticed is that as entrepreneurs, we become more content consumers now than ever before. And I don't mean content in terms of the written form. I'm talking about content more in the video, stroke, podcasting, even virtual events to a degree. We've just learned to consume this stuff differently. And one of the things I've noticed is though the world's transitioned, and I don't know if you've noticed this, but I've noticed that business owners are quite reticent to move with the times. Yeah, com- completely agree. And it may well be a comfort zone thing, but you know, within the space of 12 months, we were forced to go on Zoom, to go on camera, to have a lot more virtual um, meetings with some of them being recorded and you never know where that content is going to end up. So a lot of the time, from my perspective, business owners may be avoiding going on camera, avoiding podcasting, avoiding speaking. And from my perspective, I think it's such a powerful tool to have in your toolkit as a business owner. And I really do recommend that business owners use speaking, presenting, video podcasting as much as they can in 21 and beyond. I mean, you would probably say, I mean, or it would be fair to argue that everyone now should be camera friendly, camera ready. I mean, the importance of speaking now is probably stronger than it's ever been before. Because as you said, two years ago, you couldn't get people on Zoom. No. Now people find Zoom to be second nature. However, if you're going to be on a platform like Zoom, you better be good at it, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, we used to have a lot more conference calls. We used to have a lot more telephone calls where you didn't have to worry about body language, and eye contact and facial expressions and, and how you look. So, yeah, when it comes to video, there's a lot more elements there. And the way you come across, you know, you'll get picked up if you don't have that dynamic delivery when it comes to speaking on camera. So have you found have you found it with entrepreneurs coming? I mean, have you had many come to you through the pandemic needing to make that transition? Yeah, so a lot of the people that I work with, I always say they're the world's best kept secret anyway, because they're amazing at what they do, but they're too scared to speak, they're too scared to go on camera, or they're too scared to podcast. So something I've had to try and help people with is overcome the fears and limiting beliefs when it comes to speaking and presenting and camera. And then once they've got past that, it's then how do I do it in a way that helps me get my message to my market with confidence and create this great content that's going to be out there on the web forever. Why do you think that entrepreneurs still hide behind the company? Because here's the interesting thing. You take all the leading brands out there. You take, and I'll give you a great example. Tesla probably is one. Yeah. Where you can't shut Musk up. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's not necessarily that Tesla's doing a load of the marketing, but he's that figurehead that, and his following is just insane. Mm-hmm. And I remember very early on, in fact, in his early days as a CEO, to be honest with you, he was a shocking presenter. So he wasn't exactly born a great presenter, but he's been on that journey now. And to be honest with you, I would be quite loath to have anybody else release content out of Tesla than him. Because actually the way he delivers that message, the personality behind the brand is so strong. That's what people buy into, is it not? It, it absolutely absolutely is. And you think of Virgin, you think of Richard Branson, you think of Facebook, you think of Mark Zuckerberg. And, you know, we're in the world of personal branding now. And people connect with people. And that's the way it is. We'd much rather find out about a personality than a, a corporate brand. Um, and that's why I really do recommend business owners to think about how they can bring their personality into their brand as well. I was probably saying that wasn't open to people when they went into business or when they went into industry for the first time, because this whole sort of social networks and social visibility is probably a phenomenon for the last 15 years. Absolutely. And, you know, people are making decisions which companies to, to buy, buy from and which companies to partner with based on, you know, the, the personal brand behind the business. So, if people don't agree with Elon Musk, they'll probably never buy a Tesla. Um, you know, and equally, if people don't agree with Mark Zuckerberg, they probably won't bother going onto Facebook. So, yeah, it's it's really important now 
that there's a competitive advantage by being a great personal brand behind your business and somebody may well choose to work with you rather than your competitor. And in all fairness, if people don't want to work for with you or buy from you, the chances are they weren't right for your business in the first place. So it really doesn't matter, does it? Yeah, exactly. So marketing is a disqualification process as well as it is a qualification process by, you know, there's only a certain portion of any market that you actually want to work with. And by being honest and authentic and actually splitting opinions, that should be seen as a good thing because you're really focusing on those people that you actually do want to work with anyway. Now, we're talking about personal brand and the importance of personal brand and people are going to be tuning in thinking, yeah, that's okay, but they're still not going to shift. Yeah. And it may be for a number of reasons. I mean, what are the first kind of steps you would encourage people to take on this journey? Yeah, so if the reason is, and I work a lot in this space, if the reason is fear of speaking or fear of people's opinions or fear of judgment, which a lot of the times it is, what I always say is, it's learning to speak and present is like a skill. So learning to ride a bike, learning to swim. Your first swimming lesson isn't in the Pacific Ocean. You know, you're in the shallow end with your armbands on. Um, and that's the same for speaking. So things like podcasting is a great step into the world of speaking because you're in the comfort of your own home. You're having a great conversation and you're getting your message to a wider audience um, without having to actually stand on stage or speak in front of 10,000 people in a big arena, for example. I mean, it could be even argued that a podcast would have a bigger reach online than you would have in a, at a conference. It can do, yeah. And, and the best thing about the podcast episode is it's evergreen. You know, it's searchable on Google. It sits on Apple forever. Um, and the second best thing about a podcast is you can repurpose the content. So, for example, Peter, you may well use this episode as transcriptable blog post, video on YouTube, and audio on uh, Apple, Spotify, Google, um, all of the above, all of the above, audiograms, videograms, you know, TikTok clips you can grab out of this as well. So it's just a great way to create content and just get it out there without having to have the pressure of speaking on stage. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not at TikTok yet. No, no, not yet. Not um, yet. Not yet. I have to get past the stupid videos first before I yeah, come right. and create some content for it. But it is interesting that when you look at it in the channels that you mentioned, especially TikTok. I think that's the second largest business channel in the world. Yeah. I'm not sure how you consume business content within 30 seconds, but people are doing it. So it just shows you the shift and actually how you need to transition yourself. And and it's entirely video based, the platform. So yeah, if that's not big enough case for video, um, what is? And I think the way you've put it is quite eloquent. I mean, at the end of the day, once you've created a piece of content, it's evergreen. So it's going to be, providing you do it right and you get it properly tagged up when you yep. load it all up, then it'll be searchable forever. Yeah. Whereas when you do status posts and everything, normally you'll put a post up. When it's gone, it's gone. And that's the same with paid advertising. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. paid advertising has a really finite, finite window. Once yeah. your money's used up, your money's used up. It's gone. Yeah. There's nothing you can do. So interesting. So I take it as bite-sized chunks. What else do people need to do to become video stroke audio centric? So for me, um, you know, it may sound obvious, but I do recommend working with a coach. Um, sometimes we try and figure this stuff out on our own or we put it off until we're perfect or good enough. By getting that instant feedback and getting a coach to help you through this, it really does speed up your progress and um, yeah and also with a coach you know you can do it over zoom again you don't need to leave your home you can get feedback on your hand gestures your facial expressions your voice and um, everything that's going to help you become a dynamic presenter i mean do you have any stuff online that people are quite interested that they can go to absolutely so um just google succeed through speaking that's our brand and we're on that's our website. That's all of our Instagram handles are at Succeed Through Speaking as well. We've got loads of free videos. We run a free monthly masterclass, which is how to get your message to market with confidence and clarity. So yeah, just check us out online and we'll be able to help you out, I'm sure. And they probably can find you on YouTube as well, right? Absolutely. Our channel is called Succeed Through Speaking as well. So at the end of the day, you've got to start somewhere. I mean, one thing I found always with shooting video and, or doing podcasts is that the quality of the audio needs to be absolutely spot on. It does. I think people will never say to you, your video looks crappy, but they'll always say that your episode sounded crappy. 
Yeah, and that doesn't have to be a big investment either. USB mic, fifty pounds off Amazon, and uh, that's what I'm using right now actually. And yeah, it's it, it makes a big difference. Yeah, as I say, technology has moved forward in such a pace, you can get broadcast quality equipment cheap now. Yeah, you can, you can, and and equally lighting, you know, all of it Amazon or other places, it's available as well, I'm sure. But um, yeah, it's very affordable. So the reality is. If you look at the development of tablets, smartphones, the miniaturization of computing, we are going to be continuously taking on information via sort of probably dynamic means, be it video, podcast. Mm -hmm. It's only going to get stronger unless people learn to pivot and transition to this medium and become good at it. The chances are someone may have a less superior product but a far better marketing engine in terms of personal brand. Yeah. And they'll outsell you all day long. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that's, that's, that is the sum of this message. Absolutely. Great. And if people want more information, get in contact with you directly, how do they connect with you? Yeah. Again. So just type in at succeed through speaking or go to www.succeedthroughspeaking.com and you can contact me there. I mean, I definitely believe that this is going to be an area that is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. And the reality is, as entrepreneurs come into the marketplace, the younger entrepreneurs will be far better at doing this stuff than the older ones because they've been doing it from an early age. They've been exposed to it from an early age. A lot of people these days are very much social. Let me do a quick Facebook Live, a LinkedIn Live or whatever. They'll do their TikTok, their Instagram, their Snapchat when you're really young. So I suppose they get conditioned to it. So by the time they sort of get into industry, they're naturally good at this stuff through peer-to-peer probably they've had peer-to-peer coaching they've Mm -hmm. learned from how their peers have done it and i just think there's a whole generation if they're not careful are going to be totally left behind yeah completely agree great listen it's been an absolute pleasure having you on today's episode if anything's resonated with you and you want to have more conversations about how do you get good on video perhaps how has video worked for me head over to balka.com and get in touch Tom's given you plenty of tips. You can go into his website and see for yourself the steps you can take. But more importantly, please don't ignore this. It's not going to go away. It's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. The chances are we're going to be doing more over video over time. The last thing you want to do is when you're doing your sales pitch on video or whether you're doing sort of keynotes or anything, you just don't want to suck at it. You want to become really good at it so that you have that confidence that people just want to buy from you. So once again, Tom, it's been a pleasure having you on today's episode. Thank you so much. And remember, everyone, failing to learn is learning to fail. Please stay safe.